this video, I explore the Brooklyn Bridge on the hunt for some photographs. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers except the ability to get warm weather. But that doesn't matter because New York is full of amazing things, whatever the weather. And today, I come out to the Brooklyn Bridge. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take some pictures. Now, we're gonna start down here and then we're gonna head up actually onto the bridge itself. But we won't be doing a 15 minute photo challenge because this place is huge, absolutely massive. So let's start down here because I wanna do a panorama to really get a sense of the huge scale. Now, my panorama, really simple technique. Start in aperture priority, start with f8 as my aperture, and I'm gonna take a meter reading from what I think will be the middle, which is, well, it's gonna be the skyline of New York, of course. So let's just take a meter reading. So my camera tells me a shutter speed of 500th of a second, f8, ISO 100. Switch to manual, dial those exact settings in. 500, f8, ISO 100, and then I'm gonna take a picture of my hand. Yeah, I know, exciting, huh? But that just tells me this is the beginning of my pano sequence. So when I get back to, to England and I see all my pictures, I remember that this is a pano. Okay, so over there is, well, over there is Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That's gonna be my beginning point, but it's gonna seem a long way away in this shot. Okay, so that's going to be shot number one. And then I'm going to look for whatever is on the right-hand side, put it on my left-hand side for the second shot. And then go round. And round. And round. And round a little bit more. And round a bit more. And then round again. And round. And round. Hello. <laughs> and round again and round back to the beginning. So why did I go all the way round? Well, it's great to do a panorama, but you don't have to use all of the pictures. If you take lots of pictures, you can choose how much of the pano you want. If you only do a little bit and you get back home and you think, oh, I wish I had a slightly bigger panorama, what are you gonna do? Fly three and a half thousand miles back to New York? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do, but sadly, I don't think that's gonna happen in the near future. Okay, so that's my pano in the bag. What we're gonna do now is go up onto the bridge. Let's go. So we've made it up onto the bridge. It's a little bit noisy up here, but it's an amazing view. And that's what it's all about with photography, the view. So I've still got my, my 10 to 20 Sigma lens. This lens is perfect for the Brooklyn Bridge because there's just so much to take in. So I've reached a point where I think I've got a really good shot. I'm going to take a picture here with the 20 millimeter end of the lens, just to show you the difference. So that's what I get with the 20 millimeter end of the lens. Let's dial that out to the 10 millimeter end of the lens. And just have a look at the difference there. It's incredible how much more you get in with a 10 millimeter lens compared to a 20 millimeter lens. I'm not really sure about the shot. I shot this in landscape, but you know what? This is a portrait format shot as well. So let's do it in exactly the same way. Let's start with the 20 millimeter lens in portrait format, and then the 10 millimeter end. And in 10 millimeter, I look how much further I can angle down. How much more I get in, woo! How much more I get run over. Fantastic. So at 10 millimeters, they look like they were miles away from me, but they were probably really, really close. Okay, that's this bit done, let's keep going. This is a huge bridge, I've got more to do. Wow, what a view, I mean, absolutely amazing. All of these wires from the position I'm looking at look incredible. And I know my 10 to 20 millimeter lens, they're gonna look, well, just stunning. So here we go again, let's do the same trick again. We'll do this, well, it's gotta be a 10 millimeter shot, this without question. Yeah. I think I'm going to go for a lot of sky as well. And we'll turn it over. So here's a little thing. More of my shots are taken at this height than any other height. 
is that the best place to be right now? No, I don't think it is actually. I'm going to change my shooting position from my, my standard standing height. I'm going to get down a bit lower. And I can shoot low because I've got this flippy, foldy screen of the 60D. These little screens are fantastic. They are so much better. So let's get down really low. We'll go really wide. I'm literally going to put it right on the floor. Turn on live view. It's a very sunny day today, but I can see. I can see what I'm getting in here. Now, if I shoot this at f8, I get a depth of field that's pretty good. But I can rest this on the floor and use f22 because it's not going to move very much. And at f22, I'm going to get a much bigger depth of field. Yeah, I'll get a slower shutter speed, but this is just working really well for me. Okay, let's just back up just a little tiny bit. Try and get this nice and symmetrical. And what a difference. Now again, I can turn this over so I can do it in upright format as well, in portrait format too. Now it's a little bit harder to balance like this. But that works really well as well. I love that, that's fantastic. Let's angle it up a little bit. Okay, so I think we've got that. Let's move on and see what else we can find. This is a great view. This is, this is New York for me. Traffic, noise, and an amazing view of the Manhattan skyline. This is probably gonna be my last shot here in New York. So this is a great way to finish. I wanna take some pictures of the cars coming underneath here. So I'm gonna be working in aperture priority mode. I'm gonna choose an aperture of F11. Now that gives me a lot of depth of field, but hey, we've got the entire Manhattan skyline to get sharp and the road just a few feet below me as well. So I need that big depth of field. So let's just take a shot here and see how we go. Now, you may not get this on the video, but I can feel the bridge moving. The floor is moving. I'm holding my camera here, but I can feel it shaking. So here's a really good way of working to get that extra level of sharpness if you haven't got a tripod. We've got some serious steel work here. My elbows are gonna form a little tripod by resting my elbows on the bridge, bracing myself against the, the bridge to get that more sharp, stable shot. Now, what I'm looking for is a cab. I want a yellow cab in my last picture of New York. The yellow cabs are everywhere here in New York, and that's, for me, that quintessential look. Manhattan, yellow cabs, Brooklyn Bridge. Let's get the shot. Okay, so there we go. We've got some brilliant shots around the Brooklyn Bridge and on the Brooklyn Bridge. Now, what I'm gonna do is get one of my favorite pictures into Photoshop, and we'll do some editing in Photoshop, and we're gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Well, if you think it looked a little bit cold up on Brooklyn Bridge, you weren't even close. It was absolutely freezing, but it was well worth it for the photographs and it's an amazing location and I can't wait to go back one day. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna edit the last picture from that sequence. That's the picture with the cab where everything is black and white apart from the yellow cab, which of course is yellow. Now I'm gonna do this in Photoshop CC, but it is exactly the same in Lightroom. So let's begin by getting our raw file and bringing it into Photoshop CC. That immediately opens it up in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is actually take away all of the color apart from the yellow. And the easiest and quickest way to do that is to go to the HSL stroke grayscale option, find the saturation tab, and then take each and every color down to minus 100. As I go, you'll notice the color disappearing from the picture. Now the yellows, of course, is the one I want to leave behind, but I'm gonna take away the orange. Now, there are actually oranges in that yellow cab. It's not pure yellow, but of course, there's an awful lot of orange in the ironwork as well, so we'll fix the yellows in another way. So we're left with just the yellows, and they do look a little bit washed out because we have lost the orangey bits of things, but I'm just gonna pump up the yellows so they are really intense yellows like so. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of other areas where there are yellows still left behind, and that's 
perfectly normal. Of course, a photograph isn't just made up of a single tone of yellow in one spot. There are yellows throughout the picture, as there are with all the other colors. And I'll show you how to deal with that in just a bit, towards the end of this video. Okay, so next thing to do is to go back to the basic panel and we're gonna make some basic adjustments. Now I know I want a really contrasty picture. So I'm gonna increase my clarity and I'm gonna increase my contrast. Now I'm gonna do those two things first so it gives me an idea of how the picture is going to look. Now there is a sky that's worth aiming and, and getting out with the highlight slider. That used to be called recovery, but now it's called highlights and is much more powerful. Similarly with the shadows, which used to be fill light, I can just open up the shadows quite a bit like so. Trouble is that sky is still a little bit wishy-washy. There is definitely a better sky in there. And to go get it, I'm gonna use the graduated filter. Now the graduated filter allows me to choose an exposure of say minus one stop. And just by clicking and dragging, I get a nice straight graduated filter across the sky. The further you drag, the more gentle the blend becomes and you can move and change the, all the positions and the angles after you've started. And of course you can even change the exposure, but around about minus one looks good. Okay, so I'm happy with everything I've got there. It just leaves me that little yellow stripe down the side and the slight yellow haze. Now to deal with that, we're gonna use a tool very similar to the graduated filter. It's called the adjustment brush. Now you'll find it right next to the graduated filter. There it is. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset everything. So let's bring the exposure back to zero and I'm just gonna change the saturation. So we'll bring the saturation down to minus 100 and I'm gonna paint over the picture. Now where I paint, I'm gonna remove the color so that yellowy tone disappears and I'm gonna go around the edge of the car but try not to clip the car if I can possibly avoid it. The more time you spend doing this, the better. If you do take out a little bit of the color, just hold the Alt or the Option key, and that'll allow you to erase what you've just done and bring the color back through. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes you will find you have to do that more than once depending on your settings, but in this case, that's fine. So very last thing to do is to jump back to the normal tools and we'll find the split toning option. And on the split toning option, I'm just gonna increase the saturation only for the shadows. I'm gonna put it to around about 25. And then I'm gonna change the hue and I'm gonna put that around about 35. And that should give me a nice sepia tone where before it was black and white. It's a little bit of a tweak, but it makes all the difference and it really makes our picture stand out from the crowd. Okay, so there we are. There is the last picture from my trip to New York City. I hope you've enjoyed that little sequence of videos that I shot there. If you wanna see more videos from me and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you should be clicking on the subscribe button right now. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.